Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening, depending upon where you are in the world. And welcome to this webinar on market sentiment. As you can see, my name is Martin Essex and I'm an analyst and editor here at Daily FX. Um, I've worked as a financial journalist, I've worked as an economist, and I'm also a technical analyst. So as you'd expect from that, I trade by mixing fundamentals with technicals, and I also look at market sentiment and geopolitics. Uh, these are my personal views, not anybody else's, and I have to show you a disclaimer before we carry on, so please take a few moments to read that. Thank you to oh, the two of you who both said you can hear me, which is uh, very, very good. So let me start by showing you some charts as usual. So if you've not here before, what I normally do is I run through the charts and tell you what I think of them. And then I move on to the uh, sentiment indicators on the calendar. Then I'll look at the IG client sentiment data and so forth. So please stay with me. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask them at any time in the um, chat box thingy. Right, so what? let's start with the dollar because the, the main story today, as it has been for a while, is dollar strength. So um, there has been, I suppose, a strong demand for dollars simply because uh, US Treasury yields keep on rising. So the higher US Treasury yields rise, um, the uh, more people get for putting their money in dollars if they're trading in cash. And so clearly it's worthwhile because there's a big yield um, differential between the US on the one side and other countries on the other, but well, several other countries on the other. So that I think is why the people are buying dollars. It's not really a, a, a risk off trade. Uh, people aren't really talking very much about safe havens anymore, um, but still the dollar continues to rise. And I see no reason why that trend shouldn't continue. Of course, there'll be setbacks occasionally. I mean, if you look here on this chart, uh, you've got, uh, I can't find my cursor, there it is. Right, so we're going up here and then you've got a bit of a retracement here and then it keeps going up. So I think on that basis, you might see a retracement at some stage, but well, clearly not for the moment. Clearly, um, the dollar is in a rising trend. And that, um, well, I guess in a way that's surprising given what's happened to this hedge fund, Archegos Capital. I've no idea how to pronounce that, but let's say it's pronounced that. Um, they were, they seem to have been, t uh, seems to have been some excessive risk taking there. But I think the, f the, the worries that people had about a broader default have now eased. Um, so I'll show you one or two other dollar charts. Arch Egos says Ashok, thank you very much. <laughs> Arch Egos, okay, right. Um, dollar yen, uh, because that's one of the most interesting um, uh, currencies, I think. If we go all the way back to here before it was higher. So uh, dollar yen is, is at roughly um, that's highest for a year. And same story that I was saying about a moment ago. So uh, people are a bit worried that as the US economy um, expands, um, inflation might possibly be, um, I'm just laughing again, Ashok says no ego, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, right, what was I saying? Dollar yen, highest for a year. Um, inflation worries are essentially what has lifted US Treasury yields. In fact, they've really, they've spiked. And then there's this Archegos um, uh, problem as well. So I think that explains that very much. Um, and again, if you look at that uh, progression higher, I see no particular reason why that should halt any time soon. Um, if you look at Euro dollar, you don't get quite the same picture, but you certainly do roughly. This is the Euro falling. So again, the dollar is, is strong everywhere you look and that trend does seem likely to continue this trend of a higher dollar higher dollar yen uh, lower euro dollar remember as i said i think there will be setbacks along the road but nonetheless i think that's roughly there what's going on so euro at its um uh, lowest for uh, four and a half months roughly um and not only those things i've already been talking about but also um the likelihood of tougher 
coronavirus curbs in France and Germany. Uh, so very interesting that, that, that whilst the US and the UK, you know the story, the US and UK have successful vaccination programs, France and Germany less so. And so as, for example, the UK eased some of its lockdown rules yesterday, it does seem as though um, uh, tougher coronavirus restrictions are coming along in France and Germany. In Germany, there's an additional problem which you may know of, which is that um, uh, the, the, the federal government wants more curbs, but some of the states, some of the lender don't. So there's a bit of a row going on there. And again, that's, that's sort of not good news for the uh, euro. If you look also at euro sterling, um, if I can find where have I put euro sterling. Um, oh, it's gone. There it is. Um, right, euro sterling. Uh, very much the same picture. What you see here is is the, uh, the the euro in a very steep decline against sterling, and um, as I said, the, the the lockdown rules being eased in the UK, while at the same time they're being likely to be strengthened in in continental Europe, and so we're seeing this this pattern of lower moves in the euro and yet again I would expect that to continue. Um, let's have a look at some of the other currencies while I'm here. Um, I don't really, I always forget to mention this one. This is the US dollar against the Canadian dollar. Um, still the same, US dollar rising, um, Australian dollar. Um, well, that's, that's relatively flat, isn't it? Not so much movement in that. Uh, Aussie not really changing all that much, um, so not so much of a trend there. And uh, New Zealand dollar, um, after the sharp falls that we saw in the Kiwi, it's now steadied. So that's the kind of the most important currencies. Um, I'll go on to some of the other markets. Uh, let's have a look at the stock markets first. So this is Wall Street and Wall Street also continuing to rise. Exactly the same factors that we've seen before. I've talked about um, Archie uh, the, the, no broader default now seems less likely than it was. Um, I don't know what else I can tell you really about stocks. Um, the Dow at a record high. Oh, I know what's interesting. Um, the, the the Russell 2000, which is the much broader index, has actually fallen. So um, it, it looks as though the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is the 30, well, some of the 30 leading stocks, doing much better than the broader market, as I said, the Russell 2000 um, down. And in fact, if you look at the closes last night, the Dow was up 0.3%, and that compares with the S&P, which was down 0.1%, and the NASDAQ, which was down 0.6%. Um, so kind of interesting there. I'll have a look at um, the S&P 500 while we're here. That's this one, US 500. Um, doesn't show quite as much strength, does it? Let me go back again. That's the Dow and that's the S&P 500. So not so much movement there. And on the NASDAQ, again, it's it's kind of, you know, moving broadly sideways, isn't it? Not that much interest in the NASDAQ at the moment. Um, European stocks are edging higher. Um, this, I don't know if you know this index, it's called the EU Stocks 50, which is a kind of summary of all the um, yeah, the major European, well, the 50 major European stocks. And that is edging higher. Um, what can I say? Um, concerns that I've also mentioned about the surge of uh, COVID-19 cases in Europe, which is why they're thinking about um, extra um, measures. Um, and let's look at the individual ones. Um, the, where should we start? FTSE. FTSE. Well, not doing great, is it? Uh, FTSE limited, I think, by the strength of sterling, um, uh, because so many companies in this FTSE 100 index uh, get their overseas earnings in foreign currencies, which they translate into sterling. Obviously, a strong sterling makes uh, that look a bit less profitable. Um, the CAC 40 in France going higher, the uh, DAX in Germany, that, that's moving really quite strongly higher. If you want a trend, that's where it is, I think, at the moment. Let's look at Spain. Um, yeah, again, sort of last few days, it's been looking a bit better. And Italy also um, um, trending, I think, a bit there, which is kind of interesting. Um, 
let's go on to what should I go on to next? Let's go on to the commodities. Now, some interesting things here in commodities. Let's start with gold, um, simply on the basis that it's it's still performing really badly. Um, I think the obvious thing to say here is. I don't really know why it's so weak, but it, it's at its lowest now for what, a couple of weeks. Um, obviously hit by the stronger dollar, clearly as the, the gold goes down when the dollar goes up. But I think also rising treasury yields that I keep talking about. Um, clearly, if you can get money by, if you can get an income by putting your money into US treasuries, that's preferable to putting your money into gold and getting um, no uh, interest at all. Same story, really, that we've been talking about for a while. Um, let's go on to oil, though, um, and let's have a look at US crude. Now, this is, well, it's climbing, but it, it's kind of down this session. Um, the Suez Canal has reopened, um, which is good news, of course. Um, but also, um, there's an OPEC plus meeting this week i think it's thursday and this is a meeting of the the members of the oil producing countries plus allies such as russia and so on and i think the question there is whether there will be an extension of the current supply cuts um, and i think that therefore we'll see kind of jittery trading in oil until we get to thursday when they get that when they have that meeting um, i'll show you brent crude while we're here as well which is also on the rise again now, but just down this session. Um, well, again, it's looking as though it's going higher. Um, maybe um, the uh, supply cuts will be extended, which might explain that. But of course, there's always the, the inventories data that comes out later in the week that's important. So I'd be a bit careful about this one. I'm not sure I can see much of a trend there, you know, even though it's sort of going higher for the last few sessions. And finally, Bitcoin. Um, I don't think technical analysis works really well with Bitcoin. I think it's it's it it moves rather strangely. But huh, you know that um, the, the the key level at the moment is sixty thousand. We're we're at roughly fifty eight thousand at the moment. Uh, that's dollars for each Bitcoin. Um, the sixty thousand seems to be a bit of a a problem for it at the moment. Although I think most people expect it to go higher. These previous peaks we've seen were just over 61,000. So maybe that's the, the level that, that it's kind of aiming at. But Bitcoin moves rather strangely. And no, but I, again, I don't, I don't think it, the technical analysis, as I said, works particularly well on that. Let me see if there's anything else I haven't talked to you about. I'll come to the, um, oh, there's, sorry, I'm on Bitcoin, I remember. Um, Visa is allowing some people to use it and i think that's that's helped us a bit helped it a bit um yeah i think that's about it let's go on to, actually oh i've just had a question reginald says what is your thought on aussie cad now that's interesting that's one i haven't ever looked at so let me have a look at it now so i'll go back to currencies and i will use this little search button here to look for aud uh CAD. Interesting. Aussie CAD. Let's have a look at it and add it to my workspace. Huh. Interesting chart that. So we've got this big move down in the Australian dollar. Big move down. Then a very sharp fall. When was that? Was that to be last Thursday, I think? Okay, I can't really see the date. Let's have a look again. Um, no, it's last Tuesday. Um, right, so we had this big fall in Aussie CAD and they're now beginning to recover the ground. Um, so rising trend in Aussie, maybe. Um, if you think that's the trend, which it obviously is, that's a downward trend. It's just moved up a little bit. Perhaps you might expect it to fall back down again. Um, maybe this little recovery has got a bit further to go, but you might expect to see it fall lower then. Um, what else I could tell you? What do I think about Sterling Swiss? Oh, what do I think about Sterling Swiss? Okay, let's have a look at that one as well. Um, I will delete that uh, one there. Um, and Aussie CAD, I will delete. So I've got a bit more space. There we go. Uh, right, search for which one am I looking at? GBPCHF. GBP slash CHF. Let's have a look at what that one's doing. Okay, add to workspace. 
oh well that's just simply going higher and higher isn't it that looks much like the uh, sterling dollar chart to me but uh, a very clear trend higher so we saw this trend higher we saw this sort of moving sideways but it does look now doesn't it as though it's breaking higher i wonder if it's been up there before Gosh, yeah, not for ages. It hasn't been any higher than that. Right back in, where's this? This is uh, uh, December 2019. So yeah, that's, that's probably the level to aim at, isn't it? That level that we last saw then. How extraordinary. Yeah, again, thank you for, thank you for suggesting I look at that one. Very interesting. Um, let's have a look at the calendar. So I will go on to the um, Daily FX website our website. You can see my story here on the pounds, just replaced by one on the DAX. DAX says sets record high as positive momentum consolidates. Interesting, written by one of my colleagues. Um, however, we're here for the calendars. So let me go on to the economic calendar. Um, there's a question here. Um, how do I use my icon? That's the 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 used to be Reuters icon. Uh, the answer is I don't because I haven't got it anymore. I did have it for a while, but um, uh, I don't use it anymore. I did find it useful, but um, I've passed it on to one of my colleagues who finds it more useful than I do. So yes, it's good for news. It's good for getting charts and so on. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think I would recommend that. Well, you know, others exist and all that. But anyway, right, economic calendar. I want to show you the sentiment data uh, on the calendar. So I uh, nothing yesterday, so let's go down to today because we, we've just seen some interesting um, sentiment data. Now, uh, you will know that I look at um, sentiment data because I think it is forward looking as opposed to some of the official data, which is mostly backward looking. So I look at these confidence figures and I find them useful. So here we have. Um, we had this morning French consumer confidence in March higher than expected at 94 and I actually saw again a headline on one of the other services this morning saying um, uh, I'll read it to you European stock markets pushed higher Tuesday helped by growing French consumer confidence so it it clearly moves markets and that's why I, I tend to look at these figures if you look underneath that French one at the eurozone ones which were also released earlier today um, consumer confidence in the eurozone as expected but we saw economic sentiment better than expected, industrial sentiment better than expected. When I say better than expected, this is about, this is um, the, um, uh, compared with the consensus amongst economists polled by the news agencies like Reuters and Bloomberg and so on. Um, so that definitely market moving today, but of course gone. Um, so coming up, we have got the US consumer confidence. So we have this here at 1500. By the way, these times I'm reading to you are um, British summer time because uh, the clock's changed. So this is, there's a five hour difference now, but back to a five hour difference between um, the UK and the US. So um, six hour difference between the US and continental Europe. Anyway, um, we're expecting the conference board measure of US consumer confidence in March, and that's definitely one that's worth looking out for today. Um, going on to uh, Wednesday, let's have a look. Whoops, next seven days here. So we'll have a look at some of these coming up. So on, uh, so w w we start getting the purchasing managers indexes. Um, where am I looking? I am looking here, right? So purchasing managers indexes, PMIs. So people working for companies are asked you know, whether they think things are better, whether they think things are getting worse. Uh, this is, is a diffusion index, which means that above 50, it's growing, below 50, it's falling. So we start off with these um, manufacturing PMI and non-manufacturing PMI from China. It's generally the manufacturing one that's more important than the non-manufacturing one. So that's the ones to look out for. And then on um, Thursday, we get a whole 
bunch of these things. Um, so um, let's go to Thursday, which is April the 1st. So we've got PMIs from just about everybody. So Japan, or actually Japan, that's interesting, starts with the TANCAN. This is a survey by the Bank of Japan, which is um, worth having a look at. Um, and then we get the, um, let's have a look at the times here. Um, yeah, so we've got the manufacturing PMI from Japan, although that's a final one. We've got another manufacturing PMI from China. There are two versions of that. And then we go on to all the Eurozone ones. So we've got um, uh, France manufacturing PMI. These are all final figures, by the way. France, Germany, Eurozone, UK, all final figures. So less market moving than um, the, the, the sort of flash estimates, but nonetheless interesting. And then we go down, we've got more still. We've got the um, Canadian one. Now this, I think, I'm not quite sure, but I think maybe this is a flash figure, not a final one. Then you've got the US, which is which are final figures, and perhaps more important, the ISM manufacturing PMI. This is the Institute for Supply Management, and they do a a, a, a version of the PMI, which has is is in some ways I think more important than the the sort of standard one. That just in the US, I think this this one is very interesting, uh, and that's it for the week as far as um, confidence data is concerned. But of course, the week ends with the US non-farm payroll figures. Um, uh, they don't quite fit into my category of confidence figures, but nonetheless, if you have a look at them, um, that they'll clearly be of interest to the markets. So Although I think perhaps arguably of less interest than, than um, they used to be. Anyway, for what it's worth, the forecast is that payrolls will be up by 639,000 in March. Unemployment rate forecast to fall to 6% from 6.2%. So that will clearly be the market movers at the end of the week. Now, I've got loads more questions. See if I can actually get into some of them. Um, Oh, Ashok says there was an interesting article in the Wall Street Journal about new traders boasting about their losses. <laughs> Could be that the reason for conventional methods not working on assets like Bitcoin. I, I genuinely don't understand that. I don't understand why anybody would boast about their losses. That makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. But hey ho, um, where are we then? Um, Uh, Ashok sent me the link as well to the Wall Street Journal article, Robin Hood Traders Battle Cry. It's all just a game to me. Yes, right. I think people would much rather make money than lose money. That's um, <laughs> funny that. Um, Saad says, what is the correlation between currencies and equities, positive or negative? Um, well, I've already explained about the UK because in the UK specifically, um, the, the, the currency moves in the opposite direction to equities. But that's because so many companies in the FTSE 100 index earn their money from abroad. If you look at uh, more domestic orientated indexes, that's not true. So it's not a generality. It's just, I think, specifically true if you look at that, um, if you look at the UK. Um, right, IG client sentiment data. So, um, this is on our website again under sentiment. Um, so I will click on that. Now, Daily FX is a subsidiary of IG. IG is a company that allows people to trade, uh, you know, gives platforms for retail traders to trade. And um, we have a look where their clients are positioned, whether they're long and getting longer or short and getting shorter. And we come up with, we use this as a contrarian trading signal, contrarian trading signal. Um, so here, this is live data that you'll see on this page, dailyfx.com slash sentiment. And you see here where people are positioned in all the various assets. And you then get our um, signals that we get from that bearish or bullish down here and you get that for all the major assets um, however what I'm more interested in not the live data is this one here this green box here that says view full IG client sentiment report which is updated every four hours but that's fine by me so which assets are people long of well silver and gold simply um, and that's interesting as well because um, 
Ha. Anyway, um, and then the ones that they're most short of, which is mostly the stock market indexes, uh, S&P 500, CAC 40, uh, Dow Jones, uh, DAX, and so on. And then here, this is one of this is a chart that I find very interesting, which is the changes in long and short positions. So I'm looking for major changes in these positions for perhaps for a signal. Um, so where have we got? Oh, and by the way, I think this works better for currencies than it does for other things. Let's have a look at, for example, one that I was looking at before was Euro Sterling, wasn't it? So let me do a quick control F to find EUR slash GBP and see what it says. Um, Oh, it's mixed. Okay, not so interesting. That's a shame. Um, let's have a look at one of the others. Um, let's say dollar yen USD slash JPY, which I've been talking about quite a bit so far, haven't I? Yes. So that that does give a signal. So this is the chart. It shows that the the, uh, the, the pink is is long position. Sorry, short positions. Blue is long positions. Um, and then this sort of this this little line here is the bar. The, the candlestick chart, of course, is the price. Um, so retail trader data show 42% of traders are net long, we're talking about dollar yen here, ratio of traders short to long at 1.35 to 1. So more traders are short than long. Uh, um, but look at this, number of traders net long is 26%, more than 26 times, ha, more than 26% higher than yesterday and more than 15% higher from last week. So traders going long in, 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 in a lot of traders going going more net long dollar yen. We take we typically take, as I said, a contrarian view to crowd sentiment. And the bottom line is dollar yen price trend may soon reverse lower, despite the fact traders remain net short. How interesting. Okay, so dollar yen price trend may soon reverse lower. Uh, I have to say this every week, I would never use this on its own. Um, you look at the fundamentals, look at the technicals, just use this as perhaps an extra thing to look at, because I think you might find it quite useful. Um, Samuel says, how do we effectively use sentiment data like you've shown on the daily FX site to influence our trading decisions? Okay, I think I've just answered that. Um, yes, so uh, don't use it on its own. Uh, use other things as well, but, you know, worth taking a look at um, as well. Um, what haven't I talked to you about? Yes, the fear and greed index. Fear and greed index, I'll just make sure I've updated that. Um, so this is from CNN Business, um, CNN the broadcaster of course, and um, it produces this fear and greed index, which as it says here, tracks seven indicators of investment investor sentiment. And they say that risk is off. So not to 50 means traders are sort of looking for havens basically and 50 to 100 says they're looking for riskier assets. And it's fallen quite a lot, fallen to 44 at yesterday's close. This is presumably updated in American time. Um, and that's down from neutral previous close 54 a week ago. So it's back to levels it was roughly a month ago. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? And that's another reason, I suppose, why the dollar is rising. Having, as I said earlier, I don't really see it as a safe haven at the moment, but this does suggest it is. Um, right, I think that's about it. Um, let me just, before I go, show you our education section, because whatever other people say, I don't like moves, losing money. So here is our education section. It's got an awful lot of stuff in it. It's got stuff for um, uh, beginners, people who've been trading for a little while and people who've been trading for a very long time. So have a look at all that. There's always new stuff coming up. So for example, we have in our free trading guides section, if you go right the way down to the bottom, let me show you. 
after our advanced trading guides, we've got our forecast. Now our forecasts are about to be updated, so don't take a look at those at the moment um, because we'll obviously start, we'll be producing new ones for the uh, second quarter. But these are new, how to trade guides, how to trade euro, dollar, sterling, and so on and so on, oil, gold, lots of other things. So um, have a look at those if you like, and um, I think I hope you'll find them useful. Um, have I got time to take one more? Um, is the recent dollar strength also correlated to the first quarter rebalancing of portfolios? Yeah, I haven't looked at that. That's something that one of my colleagues does. Um, things move. Uh, yes, I suppose actually I should say that anyway, shouldn't I? Things move very strangely as the quarter comes to an end because there's a lots of rebalancing of books. Um, so markets can move in not the way you might expect them to. So if you're very cautious, wait for the uh, new month before you do anything. But if you're willing to take a risk, then um, today, tomorrow, we'll see some portfolio rebalancing. Sorry, Roland, I can't answer your question. I don't know what the rebalancing is going to be. But um, as you say, it's something that should be used. Um, right. I think that's about it from me. Um, I have to go back to showing you our risk disclaimer. So I hope you found that useful. Um, I'll be back, uh, hopefully, at the same time next week. Um, in the meantime, whatever Robin Hood traders think, um, I hope you make a profit. Thank you very much. Goodbye.